Kenya's wildlife is the country's biggest tourist draw. It annually attracts over a million tourists and generates over a billion dollars for the national economy. Black rhinos are a charismatic pillar species of the Big Five. But will this ancient animal survive? The eastern black rhino have declined by a staggering 97.6% in the last century. It's no surprise they are listed as critically endangered by the International Union of the Conservation of Nature. In the 1970s, there were still 20,000 black rhinos in Kenya. By 1989, only 400 remained. It's, um, it's a real challenge that we're facing. Rhinos <laughs> represent what's happening to so many other species. The same thing is happening with cheetahs, lions, and elephants. So they really are uh, maybe symbolic of the challenges that lie ahead for many species in this country. What sets Africa's rhinos apart from the rest of Africa's endangered species is that their steep decline is almost entirely due to poaching, not habitat loss, or human-wildlife conflict. 23 African countries have lost all of their rhinos, and only four of 10 countries with black rhinos have a viable population with any chance for a future. South Africa, Namibia, Zimbabwe, and Kenya. Perhaps the biggest tragedy for this country is that our rhinos are so few in number now that to go and see one, you've literally got to go to one of the prime conservation areas. That means that most Kenyans have never seen a rhino and they never will see a rhino. And so to, to forge uh, public interest and support for rhino conservation is quite difficult when those people who we want to support that conservation can never see those animals. However, one private conservancy in Kenya has defied the odds. The Old Pajeta Conservancy, working with the Kenyan Wildlife Service, are slowly, but surely, helping black rhinos increase and scrape back from the brink of extinction. The Old Pajeta population was uh, started in 1989 by introduction of 20 individuals into the sanctuary, which is the minimum viable number uh, for any new startup. Today, Old Pajeta Conservancy hosts just over 100 black rhinos, the largest breeding population in East and Central Africa. The black rhino is grey in colour. They are classified as browsers because of their lip. Their lip is hooked, it is a prehensile, it is pointed, uh, specifically adapted to what I've said as browsing, as opposed to the white rhino, which is a grazer. It's the grass to grazes. The black rhino, the main distinguishing features, as you can see, apart from the lip or the mouth, they've got two horns, a front horn and a rear horn. Those horns have been the black rhino's kiss of death. I mean, rhino horn has always been in demand, but it's increased dramatically in the last seven or eight years as a result of increasing affluence in the Far East, uh, where rhino horn traditionally was used in medicines, but increasingly is used as a kind of status symbol to signal to other people that you're a wealthy person. For example, it's used in powdered form to cure hangovers by wealthy people. So it's like having a Porsche or a Mercedes parked outside your house. So because of that demand, the price payable now for rhino horn has hit record levels. So right now, rhino horn in places like Vietnam is probably more expensive than gold and probably carries a price uh, similar to what you would pay for cocaine. Its medical properties are just a myth. Rhino horns, like human fingernails, are actually made from keratin, but that hasn't stopped their pointless slaughter. The poached rhinos are memorialized in the All Pajetas Rhino Cemetery. It's really is a female rhino which was uh, having some of the calves, which are about eight calves, and it was killed by the poachers using the dart gun. Uh, and they shop all the horns, they left the, just the body like that. So uh, it was very sad that moment.
Kenya's rhinos were decimated in the 70s and the 80s as a result of poaching for their horns. And um, all of the wild rhinos were captured, put into protected areas, fenced off and put under guard, like armed guard. It's, I don't think there is any other species that has that level of military protection on this planet. Today, a resurgence in poaching has left the rhino more vulnerable than ever before. In Kenya, rhinos are usually killed by local poachers who are paid a fraction of the final Asian market price. Investigators say major construction of highways and railroads in Kenya by Asian contractors provides a ready-made network for traffickers smuggling out the precious cargo. So I'm really worried about the future for black rhinos, not just in Kenya, uh, in Africa. My really great fear is that the consumption of rhino horn and the markets for rhino horn will continue to increase and global efforts to try and reduce that are being compromised, especially by South Africa, where they've just recently um, allowed legal trade in rhino horn. That is going to have a huge impact on rhinos all across the world. Conservationists fear that an ancient mammal whose ancestors emerged just after the dinosaurs may disappear in our own lifetime. And that is why Alpajeta's success is so important. So Alpajeta is around about 90,000 acres of land. So that's around about 360 square kilometers. Um, when I got here, it was primarily a cattle ranch. Um, but uh, in 1987, I think it was, they'd carved off a small part of that ranch to create the Sweetwaters Game Reserve. So in the 1980s, Kenya made a very bold decision to take all of the black rhinos out of the wild and put them into captivity. That strategy actually worked. A lot of people thought it was um, very risky, which it was. Just catching rhinos is risky. They are prone to die or to run off and fall into a river or fall off a cliff under the effect of the drugs. Um, but that, that strategy really did pay off and these rhino populations have started to increase. We currently have about 600 black rhinos, which is up from 400. They are in these little pockets around the country. The government is very, very careful not to release figures on where the rhinos are or how many they are in each of the different places. As a result of that bold decision and the investment that Kenya made on black rhinos by declaring them really one of our most important species, we have been able to increase the numbers of rhinos to the point where Kenya is now the world's third largest uh, population holder of black rhinos. So this is really significant. But the tragedy is that it still is only 600 black rhinos and you know in the next 15 or 20 years we may be able to raise that to a thousand. There are various uh, you know factors that contribute to growth of a population. One of it is biological management. At Opegeta, we manage uh, these species at individual levels. We have a clear understanding of each member of the population, a clear um, understanding of the number of females that we have here. And so we keep a track record of their breeding performance. A female rhino in good breed condition will give you a calf every four to five years. We've had a rhino here, a female rhino, that gave us six calves in her lifetime, which is very impressive. If you're to keep increasing the numbers of rhinos, you have to keep increasing the amount of area that you can take them to. But of course, that decision to move rhinos into small sanctuaries and fence them off means that the management of rhinos has become incredibly technical because now you have to stop interbreeding. Um, you don't want daughters mating with their fathers. And so you have to keep track of every single rhino. That means you have to know every single rhino. Oscar one, a pale cricket pitch, confirm kama umeyona ukikuja. Suji kama uluko mepata na buri leo, sababu tunamuona saa hii, na nakula na mtotaka na zidi kukua. So this is Radio Room. There are actually two command centers within the conservancy um, that sort of man and coordinate information from the field, you know, coming from the rangers or coming from any field operations. On a daily basis, every morning there's a, a team of, of more than 50 
rhino monitoring um, personnel that go out and they are tasked with the uh, to be able to report any sighting of the rhino that they come across uh, collect GPS coordinates of where they are located um, the activity that the animal would be doing at that particular moment um, you know as well as what associations and company these rhinos are in so that if there are groups you report them as groups and in fact what what Carol is uh, punching onto the computer right now is that sort of information you know which comprises the individual as identified from the notch patterns you know um, you know the sex of that animal the status the health status of that particular individual the activity and time where this animal was seen. I have been here for 50, over 15 years working on project. I love to work with the wildlife. We have about 60 black rhinos, which we have to, each and every day, have to look after them and, and all their health are also good. They get water, they feed well, and my people as well. I have about 40 people under me. No black rhino normally like bushes, so uh, it have to uh, browse and also select different species of the plant so it just goes toward the bush inside here. So we keep going following the footprint, it's a fresh one. The black rhino, uh, uh, it got three toes like this and the footprint of the black rhino is somehow round. So after following the footprint of the black rhino, so now we are coming uh, where they normally defecate the midden along the path. So I can see this one is for the young calf and the other one on the other side is the bigger uh, uh, midden site. So this one you can tell uh, the, the different uh, species of the plant uh, the, the rhino normally feed on. So you can see the forbs and you can see the acacia, uh, you can see uh, the scutia, the different species of plants. At all Pejeta, we have three corridors, and behind me, this is corridor two. And we have set aside three uh, remote sensing cameras that uh, act as a monitoring tool in terms of uh, monitoring the animals that come in and go out. And also, we have uh, 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 rangers that are usually early in the morning and late in the evening, they come and clean the corridors. To, to know or to, to, to count for the animal spores that have gone out and the ones that have come in. Uh, the vet that is resident here at Opegeta assists with determining also injuries that really need to be looked into or need to be treated. So we've recently had our rhinos being predated upon by, by lions, including even adult black rhino whereby a big pred of lions just hunts them down and eats them, which is very disturbing. Of course, the treatment is usually uh, a very tricky uh, event because then it's got to be monitored from the air. Um, darting has got to be done in such a manner that you don't expose that animal to unnecessary danger. Because upon darting before the animal is tranquilized or goes down, um, it can actually take off at 40 kilometers per hour and run as such for 10 minutes. Now, of course, the daytime patrol activities uh, end at 6 or they're about in the evening. And at 6, the main security organ, which is purely an anti-poaching unit that is highly trained and uh, well equipped, comes into play. Coming up the cost of keeping Kenya's rhinos alive. In the shadow of Mount Kenya, a national treasure, Kenya's largest remaining population of black rhino is protected by a heavily armed guard. These species are protected 24-7. It means during the day there's a team that monitors them, uh, that looks at their security, that gathers biological data that is necessary for management of the species and at night there is a thoroughly armed team uh, that keeps watch over the general territory of these animals. There are two wildlife protection squads on Olpajeta, the Rhino Patrol Unit and the Police Reservists, who share intelligence and their overall mission. So what we normally do, we normally deploy at four. We normally, we normally deploy depending to the concentration of black rhinos. For instance, on the eastern side of Olpegeta, 
that's where we have almost 70 percent of uh, total population of black liners so we have a lot of manpower in the eastern sector we normally help our work hard in our with our old jogi and bolana as well as kaida bless and national police service as well we have a uh, I'm a member of about starting between all Pejata and another organization called Space for Giant. We have a stand by shopper on 24 hours. We have a fixed wing at Lewa. We normally call them for any support when we need. And we have a canine unit, more importantly, we have a canine unit based at all Pejata, equipped with three tracker dogs, one assault and one search dog. The importance of having those dogs is uh, more, more tracker dogs is that. Uh, the information here, the possibility here is to see tracks or respond to do any tracking activities. And then we are tracking, you can head up to a homestead, we need to search that whether they have a, a weapon, we can then, we normally then deploy search dog. Then if we have a learner that is visible, we can release a sort dog. Despite Olpajeta's best efforts, there were two poaching incidents in 2016 and one more recently in early 2017. Five poachers have been arrested so far, with one sustaining serious injuries. A G3 rifle with 30 rounds of ammunition were also recovered. You know, poaching now is ha normally happens at night. So even poachers normally take advantage of either that light of the moon. If they don't push at night, they push early in the morning or late hours in the evening. Although it's very rare here at Olpejata for them to push early in the morning because of the resources that we can deploy during the day. Although I can't say that they are winning because we are always after them. We have the equipment that they cannot have and we try to work more on information. You know security is information. Without information you can't be able to strategically do your deployments or react to, to any threat, emerging threat or incoming threat. So looking after Rhino means that you have to have very elaborate um, security um, operations and apparatus to, to protect those rhinos, particularly when you're, you're trying to protect them across the size of area, the, 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 the size of the conservancy which, which we're operating. So we have a series of rhino patrols um, across the whole property who live in the field and that's their job, to find rhinos on a daily basis and to keep an eye on every single individual as best they can. You know, if you put all of that together, it costs an enormous amount of money uh, to pay for on an annual basis. So to give you an idea of the economics, we currently turn over around about $7 million a year. Of that $7 million, that's revenue coming into the organization. We estimate that around about $2 million is spent on looking after rhinos, which equates very roughly to a cost of around about um, around about ten, twelve thousand dollars per rhino per year. My future of wildlife, especially black rhinos in Kenya, is that we are they will grow. They will grow provided we have a committed team in the cloud that is willing to protect all uh, do wildlife protection. Especially at all I think I have a very dedicated team. And that's why you see we have the biggest uh, the highest number of black liners. My hope and prayer is that the team that are doing wildlife protection should have that commitment, uh, should be a dedicated team. Um, the success of this population, of course, is tied to a number of, uh, a number of factors. Uh, one, having sound biological management that is based on credible science, uh, protection uh, that is really paramount for rhino uh, anywhere across the world, uh, the capacity to, to reach out and gain support both by the stakeholders, by the government through Kenya Wildlife Service, you know, positions this population um, in, in a suitable place for continued growth. You know, based on science, we know that we can only take 120, and so we are looking at expanding this population to, to the north of us, where we have Motara, a government property, that has actually accepted to embrace our way of operation here, um, and is willing to provide that area for rhino conservation purposes. And so over the years, we intend to grow perhaps even further to the north, what is now called uh, 
like keep here national park um, hopefully that will also take up rhinos and so the the entire landscape should be able to support over 200 rhinos you know in another 10 years or so if, if all goes well and that would be a major success for rhino conservation uh, within the country and with that success future generations of Kenyan children from neighboring schools have the access here to visit and learn about rhinos in the wild. Jina langu naito James Mwenda, mi ni guide. Ashuguri kia kusomesha wageni kusu Baraka, uh, the Northern Whites, na pia Information Center. Big Five kuna Ndovu, kuna Rhino, kuna Buffalo. Ha, umeona Rhino? Elephant. Elephant. One of Alpajeta's key pillars is its work and impact in the surrounding communities through support to education. The Conservancy has established two school libraries and purchased equipment to support eight computer laboratories in the neighboring schools. The facility I'm about to measure with me are going to be able to meet you. I saw a total what I live more on to temple there. We move more to a kuchunga our nyama. Il napia kuweza kuwa karibu na baraka ambayo wanaweza kumpea chakula wanaweza kumguza na hiyo imeweza sana kusaidia kuwasomesha na kuweza kuwasaidia kuelewa hao wanyama zaidi ili waweze kuweza kuwachunga ndio hata vizazi vya baadaye viweze kuwa kuwaona baraka ni uh, black rhino black rhino nyeusi <laughs> na eh, ni kipofu au ni kwa sahi jicho yake kwanza ilipotea uh, kwa kupigana na rhino mwingine jicho ya right jicho ya left ikapata ile ugonjwa wa makope na daktari walipojaribu kuweza ku you know, kutengeneza ile jicho kuweza kufadikiwa ndio maana wakaamua wamlete hapa tumpatia hekali 140 mali ataweza kuwa peke yake na kutupea you know, nafasi mzuri ya kuweza kumchunga na kumpea maisha mazuri Do rhinos have a future in Kenya? Yeah, of course they have a future. For me, Kenya is one of the luckiest countries in the world. It's got this amazing wildlife asset, which in every other part of the world has been destroyed. And that wildlife asset should be uh, the platform for a, for a much bigger tourism industry than we currently have. And that tourism industry should bring wealth to this country. So for me, it needs to be nurtured and looked after. And the truth is that the Kenya government has been really supportive of us trying to do this on behalf of the nation. So do rhinos have a future? It's going to come at a cost. Um, it's going to come with a significant sacrifice. And it's going to come with the requirement for a lot of effort. But will Kenya have a population of rhinos in the next 10, 15, 20, 30 years? The answer is yes. How big that population will be, I don't know, because that will depend upon how we're clever about setting aside the habitat that is going to be necessary to accommodate that population. And in the face of growing human populations, that's a difficult thing to achieve. So we're going to have to be innovative in terms of how we find that habitat and make it available. But if we can be innovative in the way that Old Pejita has been for the past 10 years, 15 years, then I'm sure it's possible, yeah. The Kenya Wildlife Service has just finalized developing the sixth edition of the five-year Black Rhino Action Plan. The vision is to conserve 2,000 black rhinos of the East African subspecies, while the overall goal for the next five years is to achieve a meta population of 830 black rhinos by the end of 2021.